His cancer patients were going into remission. His diabetics were coming off their medication. This is type one and type two diabetics. Absolutely, there was weight loss. His patients on high cholesterol, with high cholesterol levels came back to normal. And what are they eating? Meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs. The liver is often referred to as the body's project manager, not just due to its intricate processes, but also because of its vital role in maintaining homeostasis within the human body. This video delves into the functioning of the liver, its responsibilities, the consequences of dietary choices, and how it orchestrates various physiological processes essential for health. All of these foods break down in the gastrointestinal tract to a singular structure called glucose. Now the glucose goes on the M1 main highway portal vein straight to the project manager. And then the project manager determines where this glucose goes. So the first place that the liver will send the glucose, number one, is to the cell to be burnt as fuel. But on a high carbohydrate diet, you've got a lot of glucose left over. And so now the body stores it in what I call the most amazing fuel quick fuel supply in the body, it's called glycogen. They're little molecules of glucose just sitting in your muscle cell waiting to be used. The liver plays a crucial role in metabolizing nutrients, particularly glucose. When we consume carbohydrates, they break down into glucose, which is either utilized immediately for energy or stored for future use. Upon a high carbohydrate intake, the liver initially directs glucose to cells for fuel, but excess glucose becomes a challenge for the body as it can lead to weight gain if not managed properly. In situations where the body's energy needs are met, the liver stores surplus glucose as glycogen, a form of quick energy reserve found particularly in muscle cells. Glycogen serves as a critical energy source during physical activity, allowing individuals to maintain energy levels even during calorie-restricted conditions. This fascinating process underscores the liver's ability to act as a biochemical project manager, ensuring energy availability when required. So number two, the glucose is stored as glycogen. I call glycogen the diabetic's best kept secret. Because if blood sugar goes low, what do you do? Get on the exercise bike, <laughs> release your glycogen stores. So on a high carbohydrate diet, we've still got glucose left over because the cell can only store so much. By the way, the liver stores a little bit and this glycogen can be sent all over the body. Whereas the glycogen that's in the muscle cell, it's like in a prison, it can only be used by the muscle cell. And when you think about it, that's the cell that has probably the most demand on it. So what's the body going to do with the rest? What's the liver going to do with the rest of the, of the glucose? Well, we've got an amazing fuel depot, st fuel supply. I call it the basement stores. You know what the basement stores are? They're the fat cells. And what's happening to Americans today? Whew. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the third place that the liver will send that excess glucose is as fat. As the body continues to digest carbohydrates, glucose levels may exceed what cells can handle, leading to potential complications such as diabetes. The liver becomes a critical player in this scenario, not only in managing these glucose reserves, but also in mitigating potential health risks associated with high blood sugar levels. Understanding these processes is crucial. As noted, glycogen can act as a diabetic's best kept secret, facilitating energy release during exercise, which can help stabilize blood sugar levels. So what are some good foods that can improve health and lose fat? So when people are on this high carbohydrate diet, too much glucose is released. The body can only deal with so much, so it has to be stored in the fat cells. Now, Dr. Robert Atkins knew that science. So he looked at himself getting this, what we call spare tire, 
So he decided to do an experiment on himself. He decided to stop all carbohydrates. What did he eat? He, he ate a lot of vegetables, okay? And a lot of people don't realize that, with the exclusion of the potato. So he, he was eating a lot of fiber. And he knew also that the gastrointestinal tract needed to move through the next two food groups. He ate a lot of meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs. So there was his protein. And meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs was also supplying another food group, which was fat. Remember, he just experimented on himself. A few things happened. His weight just fell off. Why? Well, he's not supplying the quick-release glucose stores. And so his liver has to start breaking down his fat stores. It's called gluconeogenesis, creating glucose from the fat stores. He was never hungry. Why? Because these are the three food groups that keep the food in the stomach longer. Fiber binds up the glucose and it slowly releases it. Protein, well, protein's broken down specifically in the stomach. And fat... It coats the food a little bit, so it takes a little bit longer to break down. That's good news because it means we don't have to be eating all day long. We can eat and forget about food for the next five or six hours. He had heaps of energy. Where's he getting his energy from if he's not giving this quick-release glucose foods? Well, as I mentioned, his liver breaks down his fat stores to give him the glucose and his liver has the ability to break down protein and fat to give glucose. He had lots of energy, weight's falling off him and he's never hungry. Has he found the perfect diet? In the pursuit of weight loss and improved health, three food groups stand out as essential. Fiber, protein and fat. Fiber is critical for digestive health and maintaining stable blood sugar levels. Protein is necessary for building muscle and repairing tissues, while fats play a crucial role in forming cell membranes and ensuring proper cellular function. Combined, these food groups help control appetite and support metabolic health, making them instrumental in effective weight management strategies. But one of the reasons why so many people stop the fat is because of cholesterol. Would you agree with me? So let's have a look at cholesterol. It's a good time to look at it because the liver makes cholesterol. And by the way, it makes cholesterol according to the demand our body puts on it. And 80% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from glucose. And 20% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from fat. Now this information tells us straight away, it's not the butter on the bread, it's the bread under the butter that's the problem. And that's what Atkins found. So let's have a look at cholesterol. There are two main types. One is high density lipoprotein called HDL, high density lipoprotein, and LDL. HDL is usually called the good guy, and the reason for that is it's the carrier. So it carries excess cholesterol from the blood back into the liver. That's why it's called the good guy. LDL is called the bad guy. But what you've got to remember is the body doesn't make anything bad. It has a role. So what is its role? Its role is that of a repairer and a rebuilder. So wherever there's damage, you're going to find LDL because it's the repairer and the rebuilder. But it, ha it plays another role. It delivers cholesterol to the brain because the brain loves cholesterol. Let's have a look at the blood vessel and how the cholesterol works in the blood vessel. Because of its low density, LDL is always on the edge. Because of its high density, HDL is always in the middle. Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who wrote the book Put Your Heart in Your Mouth, she spends the first four chapters of her book defining what damages the arterial wall. See, the arterial walls are lined with little endothelium cells and chemicals damage them. Heavy metals damage them. There's your mercuries. Also, what damages them is mold. 
And where we're exposed to, she defines, the reason why it's four chapters, she defines all the different chemicals. They're in toothpaste, they're in food. What's going to plug the holes up, students? The LDL cholesterol, that's its role, that's its job. So it comes along and it plugs up. If it doesn't plug the hole up, we would bleed into the tissues. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So they're like the Band-Aid. But the person doesn't realise that the mouldy house is killing them. The person doesn't realise the 4,000 cigarettes, sorry, 4,000 chemicals that are in a cigarette. So they keep smoking. They don't realise... The, the danger in their washing detergents, in their toothpaste. So can you see that it's still happening? And they read an article that says, no, mercury does not kill you at all. Well, I haven't read the science. You know, it's a neurotoxin. Can you see what's happening? Something else is happening. So all through the bloodstream, we've got little molecules of protein. When, we're, when a person is on a high carbohydrate diet releasing a lot of glucose into the blood the blood connect the glucose connects with the protein molecules and these little these little combinations become sticky and they stick and let's say we've got a narrow piece here and they come along and oops they've caused a blockage that is the number one cause of heart disease that is the number one cause of a stroke there are widespread misconceptions regarding cholesterol, often viewed negatively. Cholesterol is classified into two main types, high-density lipoprotein, HDL, often referred to as the good cholesterol, and low-density lipoprotein, LDL, deemed the bad cholesterol. However, it is essential to recognize that while LDL plays a role in repairing tissues and delivering vital compounds to the brain, Blaming it solely for heart diseases overlooks its necessary functions. Recent literature emphasizes that cholesterol, particularly HDL, is crucial for several bodily functions and is not inherently harmful. Moreover, the intertwining of glucose with protein molecules in the bloodstream can create sticky combinations that may lead to blockages, contributing to heart disease and stroke. This alarming connection highlights how dietary choices directly affect liver function and overall cardiovascular health. Cholesterol-lowering medication. Are you ready for the side effects? Dementia, muscle wasting, Alzheimer's, memory loss, and they've just added another one, breast cancer, because our sex hormones are made from What's cholesterol. Happened? They've got many people on cholesterol lowering medication they've got everyone on the fat free diet and because you're on, you're not getting the feeling of satisfaction satis satiation or satisfaction when you eat the person eats huge amounts of carbs they've uh, lowered the cholesterol level so they can get more people on cholesterol lowering medication and people are eating margarine oh surely all of that has reduced heart disease no it's still the number one killer in the industrialized nations today, neck to neck, as I said, with cancer. There is significant concern surrounding cholesterol-lowering medications, which are widely prescribed to combat heart disease. While these drugs aim to reduce cholesterol levels, they often come with harmful side effects, such as muscle weakness, memory loss, and increased risk of diabetes. Moreover, Studies have shown that simply lowering cholesterol does not necessarily correlate with reduced incidence of heart disease. Therefore, adopting a more holistic approach to diet and lifestyle might be necessary to achieve better heart health. So, so what's your liver doing today? We're not giving you enough food to run on. And so some of your fat cells are getting broken down to give the glucose that you need. But something else a little bit more sinister is being released. And that is the fat soluble toxins that have been coming into our bodies over many years. Now this explains why your body odour might be a little worse than usual. Why your breath might be a little worse than usual. Why your... Uh, well, what you're leaving in the toilet might have a worse odour than usual because your fat cells, as they're getting broken down to give you that excess glucose or extra glucose that you need, the fat-soluble toxins are being released. They're back into the blood. The liver says, oh, not this guy again. The liver's about to wrap it up in fat and store it 
And the liver says, oh, hang on. We're receiving the nutrients necessary to break that down to a water-soluble state because it can't be released in a fat-soluble state. So how liver detox process? So what your liver is doing is taking it through three phases. Phase one of the, de of the liver detox began yesterday on your first day of juicing. And in phase one, your liver took this fat-soluble toxin and it broke it down to a metabolite. So what's a metabolite? Metabolite just really means the first stage of metabolism or breakdown. The first stage of breakdown, the metabolite is relieved. Met Right. But this metabolite is highly volatile. This metabolite creates a lot of free radicals. This metabolite is highly toxic. In fact, in some instances, it creates a substance a hundred times more toxic than it originally was especially in the case of alcohol. And you might say, well, what's the liver doing? It's just created something far worse than it originally was. It's a process. It's just Within 36 hours of starting the detox, phase two kicks in. And phase two basically comes to the rescue. In phase two, the liver takes this highly toxic metabolite and joins it together with amino acids. The union of this highly toxic metabolite with the amino acids, in fact, the, the um, scientific term is conjugate, basically joins it together like that. So the conjugation of the amino acids and the toxic metabolite releases the water-soluble state or converts it to a water-soluble. And remember, as a water-soluble toxin, it can be easily released out of the body. So phase three happens in conjunction with phase two. So in phase three, the body takes the water-soluble state and it releases it out via your sweat glands that's why your most important steam sauna is today, because you'll be releasing more water-soluble toxins than any other time of the week. It releases it out via your colon. So if you're not evacuating every day, please the st see the staff and they'll give you a little bit more of the colon tea, but also out via your kidneys, your urine. That's why it's vital that you ensure that these three organs of elimination are eliminating effectively. No use cleaning the house and leaving all the rubbish at the door. <laughs> Make sure the eliminating organs are eliminating effectively and that will ease any symptoms you may have on the detox. The liver detoxification process occurs in several critical stages primarily divided into two main phases, phase one and phase two, with a third phase involved in elimination. Phase one, activation. In this initial stage, enzymes, specifically cytochrome P450S, modify the structure of toxins, making them more reactive. This transformation prepares these toxins for further processing. Phase two, conjugation. During this phase, the liver combines the modified toxins with other molecules, for example, glutathione, amino acids, to neutralize their reactivity and increase their solubility, facilitating easier excretion from the body. Phase 3. Elimination. The final stage involves excreting the transformed and conjugated toxins either through bile into the digestive system or through urine via the kidneys. Effective functioning at each of these stages is crucial. Disruptions can lead to harmful accumulations of toxins in the body, impacting health. The liver's health is crucial to overall well-being, impacting everything from detoxification to disease prevention. By understanding the food groups that support liver function 
and being cautious of medications and refined carbohydrates, individuals can enhance their health outcomes. Emphasizing a diet rich in fiber, protein, and healthy fats, alongside fresh vegetables and herbs, can transform not only liver health but one's overall metabolic resilience.